every system has two sets of rules. The rules as they are intended or uh, commonly perceived, and the actual rules, also known as reality. In most complex systems, the gap between these two sets of rules is huge. Sometimes, however, we catch a glimpse of the truth and discover the actual rules of a system. Once the actual rules are known, it may be possible to perform miracles, things which violate the perceived rules. That quote is from a piece by Paul Boucher called Applied Philosophy, also known as hacking. He's essentially defining hacking as taking advantage of a gap between the written rules and the actual rules. So, uh, I haven't introduced myself yet. I'm Faraz, and I work on WebTorrent, a uh, torrent app for the web, and uh, StandardJS, a linter to catch programming errors and enforce uh, consistent uh, coding style. And recently, I built WebTorrent Desktop uh, with some friends. Uh, it's a desktop torrent app that can stream video instantly using some cool uh, tricks with the BitTorrent protocol. And um, I love to learn the true rules of a system, to push those rules to their limits, and to surprise people. And there's no better way to learn than uh, to analyze a system from first principles and uh, figure out how it really actually works. Plus, it's fun when you figure out how to do something that no one thought was possible. So um, over the years, I've done a bunch of different uh, hacks that sort of poke and prod at what the web platform can do. This is one of them. Uh, this is um, an app that, uh, a little web app that gets you to click on some buttons and looks like a game. But if you actually click the series of buttons, it turns on your webcam without uh, a prompt at all. Um, this was a vulnerability in Adobe Flash that I discovered when I was in college. Um, and it was, uh, like I said before, it was a surprising uh, difference between the actual rules of a system and uh, what people thought were the rules. You know, you're not supposed to be able to get webcam access without a permission. Um, so how did this work? So there's this thing called the Flash uh, Settings Manager, which was a um, little Flash app lit that would show up uh, showed up on a page on uh, macromedia.com, which was uh, the company that made Flash. And uh, it allowed you to change the settings of the Flash player. Um, but it's kind of odd that you go to this website to change the settings of uh, this, this software that's installed on your computer, right? I mean, the Flash player is um, it's installed on your computer, but you go to this site, this little settings widget comes up, and you can, you can click on it, and it'll change the settings of, of Flash. So it turns out you can actually uh, iframe that page. <laughs> and so that's what that um, demo was doing in the last uh, slide there. Oops. Here we go. Yeah. So, it, so actually, there's an invisible iframe over each of those buttons, and it's getting you to click. And uh, there's, it takes four clicks to get you to uh, authorize a permission to turn on your webcam. And there's a few extra clicks thrown in there just so that, um, it, I don't know, it, it got the user to go you know, uh, get into the, into the game. And then there you go. Um, so there's another one I did called FillDisk. Uh, it's FillDisk.com. If you go there, it would, it would uh, start to fill up your hard drive using the uh, local storage API, uh, <laughs> with cat pictures, no less. Um, and uh, it's, it's actually quite simple how this one works. So the local storage API gives every domain five megabytes uh, to store files. Uh, I think it's 10 megabytes in Firefox, but same idea. Um, and every, so every domain is supposed to get five megabytes. Uh, but it, it turns out you can create an infinite number of subdomains, and each one of those gets five megabytes. So you can just trivially iterate through and just fill up their hard drive. And so this actually became the number one starred bug on the Google Chrome uh, bug tracker. Um, it was actually funny, because it, it first would uh, crash the browser at two gigs of storage, because uh, Chrome had a bug where it was actually keeping uh, the entire amount of data in memory, and it was a 32-bit app at the time. So it just crashed. Uh, then they fixed that bug, which meant that the, at the attack actually worked better because it would go beyond two gigabytes. Uh, so it, I think it's, a, it's actually fixed for real now. Um, they, they do some kind of heuristic to detect this kind of thing. But uh, yeah, it was good fun for a while. The next thing I did, this, this, I did this one a, a year later, and this is called uh, the full screen uh, API phishing attack. And so if you look here, you'll see I'm hovering over a link that says Bank of America, and in the corner there, it shows bankofamerica.com, which is a, a popular bank in, 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 um, in America. And when you click the link, it takes you to this page that looks like it's the real site. Um, even in the URL bar you see there, it says uh, that it's, it's Bank of America. You see that it has the green uh, you know, 
SSL authentication. But if you click it, it's not really the real website. It's actually uh, just a full screened uh, image that took over the page that, that you were on before. Um, so this is kind of tricky. Uh, you know, users might not notice the little dialogue that shows up telling them that they're in full screen mode. And of course, um, uh, I work on WebTorrent, which is a torrent, uh, torrent app in the browser, and that's, I think, pretty uh, um, surprising to a lot of people that that's possible, defies expectations in some ways. Anyway, so um, I was reminiscing about my college days when I used to spend a lot of time working on and looking for these types of security issues, um, and I was thinking, you know, honestly, the web really isn't uh, that much fun anymore. I mean, we have a lot of power to build like real apps. Don't get me wrong, I'm, I, I love that. Um, we have all these kinds of APIs that let us do really powerful things, but I kind of feel like sometimes like the web is too safe now, you know? Like we need more danger to spice things up. You know, keep the web users uh, coming back for more. So I'll say it again, I think the web just isn't that much fun anymore. You know what I mean? I'm talking about like real fun, like in the good old days when we had Internet Explorer and ActiveX. So visiting a web page had some real uh, risk associated with it. You had to watch out for danger. Click the wrong link and it was game over. <laughs> so this is, you know, this is what I want. So this is uh, actually not a, an audio player. This is, this is a link which uh, when you click it will activate uh, uh, and ActiveX control and run native code on your computer. Um, and here's the thing, guys. I think <laughs> users are smarter today. I think that they're trained to be careful online. And I think the web is finally ready to bring back ActiveX and put true power back into the hands of web developers. You can quote me on that, right? Who's with me? Like, who wants, who wants this? <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so quick, quick side story. Um, I've been getting a lot of weird spam in my inbox lately. Is that happening to any of you? Like, here's some sock manufacturers from uh, Zhejiang, China, who are trying to sell me what they call sublimation socks. Um, I think they just mean that they're printed socks. But spam wastes so much of my time, so I was thinking, like, is there some way that I could waste the spammer's time in return? I've seen other people respond to the spam, you know, they, they'll write a lengthy reply to waste the spammer's time, but that would also waste my time, so I don't want to do that. So what if there was some kind of link I could send to the spammer to teach them a lesson, you know, to waste some of their time in return? Has anyone else felt this way before? Yeah, yeah. So I started looking around for weird web APIs that might help me to make a really annoying website that I could send to them. <laughs> and I, looked, I found a few things. Um, a few of these are deprecated, like Marquee and BG Sound don't work anymore. And if you want a real good time, go read about the plain text tag. That one is very weird. Um, it, just, just go look it up. Anyway, these ones weren't really that useful. But then I found it. Folks, seriously, I found the best APIs. Window.moveTo and its friends. These methods allow you to move and to resize a browser window. And I thought that there was no way that this would still be uh, allowed by modern web browsers. And uh, sure enough, it, it didn't work when I tried to use them because of the same origin policy. So that's kind of weird, but it actually makes sense. So if, if I'm this tab here, NodeFoo, and I'm trying to, um, to move the window around, I would be moving around the other tabs as well. I'd be, I'd be resizing and moving around Wikipedia and Google, which is, which is a violation of the same origin policy. But there's a solution. Open a new window. So if we open a new window, then we can move that around freely. And that still works today. There's one problem, though. Um, well, okay, first, first let me show you the, the code for, for what it looks like. So, so you, you can just call window.open, and then you, ha you just call the methods, and move to and resize to take, um, take an xy coordinate and, and, a, and, a, and a width and a height, respectively. But this doesn't work because of pop-up blockers. We have to open the new window in, in response to a user-initiated event in order to um, have the window open and not be blocked. In other words, from inside of a click or a key press handler. 
So this is how you do it. Simply just make a click handler and then open the window inside. But here's the fun part. We want to move the window progressively in an interval. So let's take a look at how that works. So I have a little page here that implements that. So if I click this, just like that. OK, now I can show you beyond that, we can do more things. So uh, you know, it's, it's cool that we can click this and um, you know, move, this, move this individual window around. Um, but I kind of want to be able to click this multiple times and have multiple windows open. So one thing we'll do is we'll make an array here. Um, and we'll just, every time uh, the user clicks, we're going to uh, take the new window and put it into, uh, into this array so we can keep track. And then in the inter interval, we're going to iterate over all the windows and, and move, uh, move each one. OK, and one thing we do is we filter out the windows which have been closed, uh, because when a window has been closed by the user, um, we, we, we can't call move to on it anymore. It would throw an error. OK, so let's see what that looks like. OK. So if I click this, we got a window, click it again. We got a second window. Now, you can't see the second window because um, it, it didn't, it, the other one left focus. So if I tab through, you can actually see they're both there. Uh-oh, what happened to this one? It didn't stop moving. Let's see, let's try that again. There we go, yeah, okay. So what I really want to do is I really want them to, I really want every time I click this button, I kind of want all of them to focus uh, immediately so that they are all visible. Um, I don't like that I have to tab through to see them all, right? So we can do that. So what I do here is I call um, this focus windows method any time that a user clicks the button. And that just uh, loops through all the open windows, and it calls win.focus on them, right? Um, and so simply just doing that will let us solve that problem. So now when I click, we got one window. Click again. Click again. Cool. All right. It's getting more annoying, right? OK. All right, next step. Now what I want to do is I want to detect when the user mouses over a window. Um, and I think we can do some interesting, fun things with that. Um, maybe you can start to think of what you could do with that. Um, so okay, how, how should we do this? Well, there's this property called window.opener, which uh, is set on windows that have been opened by other windows. OK, so if this is set, then that will tell us that we're um, inside of uh, the, the, the window that popped up. because. It, that window was opened by the uh, parent window. OK, so what I'm going to do is, if, if we're running in the child window, I'm going to do a certain, um, certain code. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do different things if I'm running uh, in, the, in the other case, where I'm, I'm running in the parent window. And so what I'm going to do is I change the window to open to open the page that we're on. OK, so before we were just opening a blank page. Now when you click, I'm going to open up the same page that we were on before. And then I'm going to have this code that branches and does certain things in the child window and certain things in the parent window and certain things in both, if that makes sense. OK? So this is cool because now we're actually running code in the child window, and we're going to detect the mouse move. So this is the code that's running in the child window right here inside this if block. OK? And uh, on a mouse move, I'm just going to set the background color of the page to green. And um, I want to be able to unset it from green when the mouse leaves. And so uh, an easy way to do that, I'm just going to set a timeout that says, after half a second, just set the color back to uh, white. And so um, as long as the mouse is moving, it will stay green, right? And um, we, 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 we uh, store the timer in this variable here so that um, whenever the mouse moves, we can cancel the last uh, half second timer that we set. OK, so every time the mouse is moving, we're just going to be canceling that timer. Um, and then uh, last thing we do is when the window closes, I'm actually going to do a better, cleverer way of detecting a closed window now. So I'm just going to set this uh, on unload event in the child window. And um, that, that gets called when the window is closed. And in that case, I'm going to um, basically, on the parent window, call this on close window function, which is going to tell the parent that the window is closed. And then the parent can do some cleanup here. You'll see the parent can uh, just remove it from the, win the wins array. OK, so there's kind of a lot there. Hopefully, uh, everyone's following. OK, so what does that look like? OK. OK, I'm not sure what the, why there's a button floating in there. Um, 
Oh, I see. It's because we're going to, because so Windows can actually open up uh, child windows. Here, give me one sec. I need to fix, let's remove this button really quick. Okay. So we'll just click on the page. Okay. So now we can see the green. So when I hover, we get the mouse move, and this is window is detecting this on its own because it's listening for the mouse move, and then when I move out, it, it goes away. And we can do multiple windows, and this should, this should all work. Okay, cool. Great. Oh, one other thing I want to point out is, this is kind of funny. If you right-click in the window, the, the, the right-click <laughs> box moves. <laughs> That's not something you'd expect, right? Anyway, uh, okay. Okay, so now what I want to do is, I want to do the same thing as before, but I want the windows to be decentralized, if that makes sense. I want the windows to actually have the move code in them themselves, so that if the parent window is closed, they can keep moving, because they have their own intelligence in them, okay? So right now, right now what happens is, if I close the parent, watch what happens, okay? I click X, and now if I go back, those windows are frozen, right? Okay, so we don't want that. I want to make the windows decentralized. <laughs> okay, so that's simple. We just move the set interval um, into the, the code that runs uh, in the child window. Okay? So now if I run that, we can see... Okay, uh, we have the same problem with that button showing up. Sorry, let me just, let me just kill that button really quick. Okay. okay, so there we go. Now if I close the parent window, hey, what do you know? It still moves. Cool. Has a mind of its own. All right, now the fun part. Let's make the windows bounce off the edges of the screen. So there's a lot of code here. It's not that important to go into the details of it, but, um, but basically we detect the edges and we invert the direction when we hit an edge. Okay? And then we want to maybe play some videos in the, in the windows as well, you know, because <laughs> why not? Okay. All right, so. That's nice. All right, and remember, these windows themselves can, can handle click events. So if I click, we got more. All right. All right, now let's see if my, my browser will unfreeze right now. It works really well. <laughs> All right. Sometimes it... Uh, it requires you to kill Chrome. It's actually interesting. Every time you move the window around, it, like, it has like this, uh, it's like a synchronous, it's actually a synchronous method. So it, it, it pauses JavaScript execution for quite a while, um, which is why I think that there was that problem there. OK. All right, so one, one quick tangent. I want to show you a few um, cool uh, other things you can do. So here's one thing I did. Um, this is a, a window that has physics. And check this out. If I put my mouse here, <laughs> anyway, all right. <laughs> one more thing. Here's a really fun one. OK, check this out. This is a window that will follow my mouse around. <laughs> it refuses to let me uh, escape. So if I, if I move really fast and I try to escape and, and not trigger any mouse moves, watch what happens. I escape, it finds me again. It uses, uh, believe it or not, it uses binary search on the window to find, so here, let me, let me explain really quick, step back for a sec. So what's going on here is, um, okay, so if I don't move the mouse, um, actually no, first I have to explain one thing. So when the window moves itself over your mouse, that actually triggers a mouse move event, even if your mouse doesn't move. Because the window moved over the mouse, it thinks it's the same thing. OK. So um, whenever the window gets a mouse move, it knows, it knows where the mouse is, and it can center itself around the mouse. But if, but if, um, if I move, and then of course, when I move my mouse, it can just recenter itself, because it's getting a mouse move event. OK? But if I don't move my mouse, the window has no way to know whether I've escaped the window or whether it's just sitting still in the, in the window. Because there's no mouse move events going in either of those cases, so it doesn't know how to distinguish. So what it does is it, it moves back and forth over the mouse, over where it thinks the mouse is, to keep triggering the mouse move to make sure it's still there. So this is how it idles when, when the mouse isn't moving, okay? And then when I escape the window, it needs to find it, and so it, um, it will actually... Um, actually, I have a better way to show you. 
I have a slowed down version of this algorithm, so watch this. So if I move my mouse to here, the window moves. Again, I move it to there, it moves. If I escape, it, what it does is it's going to do its little uh, side to side thing, and it sees, oh, the mouse isn't there now. So now it does a binary search. It tries the left half of the screen, tries the right half of the screen, and then it goes, aha, found you, and then it, it centers on you again. <laughs> All right. Let's just see that one more time. So it's going to do left, right, found you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, okay, okay. Back, so back to, the, back to the annoying site we're building. Okay, so, okay, just a few things here. I'm just going to dump a bunch of things. One thing we can do is ask the user if they're sure they want to leave our website. Uh, you've, I'm sure you've seen that before. One thing, other thing we can do is we can register uh, ourselves as protocol handlers for different protocols. So if the user clicks the Bitcoin link on the web, it will actually take them to our site. Um, the thing with that, with that one is you actually have to um, give permission to do that. So um, that shows up in, the, in Chrome in the form of this little button here, which is not very, they're not going to click that. But in other browsers, it's actually more annoying, so they'll, they'll definitely see it. Um, next, let's ask for the user's webcam, because why not? OK, uh, and then this is a good one. Oh, yeah. Um, OK, this is a good one. So we can fill up the user's history um, by using push states so that the back button doesn't work. If they go back, they're just going to get into a series of, like, of uh, pages that we queued up in the back button. And then we'll set the, the location back to the original URL so they won't notice that we, we added a bunch of things to their history. And then lastly, if they actually click the back button, we'll just, if they go back, we'll just say, nope, you're going to go forward. <laughs> right? <laughs> and then lastly, let's give them an alert every 15 seconds that's full of a lot of text. OK, so let's see what that looks like. OK, so, um, so first, let's try closing the tab. Oh, oh okay, sorry. Uh, oh, yeah, I have to click. OK, so now if I try to close the tab, it's going to say, are you sure you want to leave? That's always good. Um, protocol handlers, I already showed you. The webcam, um, why isn't it prompting me for the webcam? I'm not sure. Oh, I think it's because I already blocked. Yeah. Uh, OK, that's fine. Um, and then there's the alert. Uh, and, the, and then the back button doesn't work. If I click it, it just does nothing. And then lastly, if I just try to go in here and find the history, you'll see the history is useless because it's all, it's all the same site. OK. Uh, next, uh, let's, here's a good one. There's a website called superlogout.com that somebody made, which actually will um, log you out of every website that you're logged into. <laughs> the way it works is it, um, there's some sites that use get requests to do logout instead of post. So get requests can be initiated by any domain. They don't, they're not subject to the same origin policy. So if I make, I make an image and I point it at that logout URL, it will log you out. Um, so I'm just going to iframe that website since they already did such a good job for us. And then it will log you out of everything. If you don't believe me, we'll try it right now. So I'm logged into Gmail over here. That's the sock email I showed you. Um, but now if I, if I visit here and I, you'll see it's, it's, it's logging me out right here. Oh, also, uh, yeah, this is a good one. I'm doing some embarrassing web searches for the user as well <laughs> to, fill up, to fill up their, uh, their search history. That's always good. <laughs> yeah. So now if I go back to Gmail here and I refresh the page, you'll see it actually logged me out of Gmail, which is nice. Um, and here are the searches that I do also. I've got some good ones in there. OK, there's one problem with this, though, currently, which is those web searches, sure, they're, they're being, I'm doing them over HTTP so that the, the, the ISP and, your, and if you have a government spy agency, they can see the searches, which is nice. But um, one problem is that it's not adding it to my web history because it's in an iframe. So really what I want to do is I want to do this at the top level of, uh, of, in a window at the top level, so then it will be added to my web history. So I'm going to um, actually just do the same thing I did before, but here I'm going to, um, uh, where is it? Uh, right here. Yeah. Basically, I set a pop the pop-up window to this. Uh, uh, I need to close this. <laughs> uh, I set the Bing. I uh, set the pop-up window to this Bing uh, search URL um, over HTTP, and uh, and then every um, every like two and a half seconds, what I do is I just set it to the next search. 
but um, I also let it move around for a while. Um, and the thing is, you, to move windows around, they have to be on the same origin as your site. I can't move the Bing window around. But what I do is so I set the URL of it back to um, an origin I control, and then I move it for a while, and then I set it back to the next Bing search. Um, so that they can't really catch the Bing window, uh, and it's still going to be doing all those searches, and they're going to be added to their history. OK, so let's see that really quick. We're on 9. OK. Uh, OK, so now if I do this, the first window is the, is the neon cat, but the second window will be the Bing search window. Um, and there we go. It's doing different searches and, and moving around. <laughs> so if you try to close the windows, you know, I mean, you can, you can sort of try to catch them. Uh, and if you cl misclick and you click on the window, it opens another window. So <laughs> that's the best part. <laughs> All right. All right, I'm, I'm out of time. I got to do a few more just before I go. Hopefully, that's OK. Just got to do a couple more. OK. Um, I don't have time to show you the code because I'm, I'm actually out of time right now. But I'll show you just a few more. One is we, uh, Safari has this feature called Picture in Picture, so you can watch YouTube videos while you work. It turns out we can use that for our purposes. Um, we'll just put a troll video in the picture in picture. Um, why not, right? And if they close that and then they accidentally click on the window again or whatever, it reopens it. Um, OK, all right. And then uh, one more, let's see. I want to show you this one. We got 11. This one will just actually full screen when you click on anything. Um, and it's hard to tell what's happened. So my first reaction when something full screens is to hit escape, right? Like, close this. Well, we can actually capture the escape uh, key press. And when I hit escape, I'm actually opening up additional windows. Uh, so I have more pop-ups open. Uh, the more I hit escape, the worse it gets. Um, and then here's the best part. If I, if I, so let me just hit escape a few more times. You can see how many get opened. Oh, where do they go? I don't know. <laughs> and then if I go back to the parent window and I hit escape, what actually happens is, um, Where is it? Oh, yeah. Basically, what I can do is I capture the, the, the close, and I reopen again, full screen. So it's impossible to leave. Because apparently, um, that is considered um, it's a user-initiated event. An escape is a key press. And that's, you're allowed to open up full screen inside of key presses, even if it's them trying to leave full screen. <laughs> OK. Last demo is this one right here. In Safari, this is everything. We've intercepted all shortcuts, all key presses, all mouse events, everything. Um, and so now, this is what you get. One click can actually open up multiple windows sometimes. Um, and then if you hit Command W to close a window, that actually is a key press which can be captured. So it's, it's basically impossible to get out. It is actually impossible in Safari to get out. Yeah. That's it. I'm done. I'm done. I mean. <laughs> OK, just a couple more slides, and then we're done. So um, I ended up sending them an email and letting them know that I wanted a custom image on my socks, and I gave them the link to view the image. <laughs> and if you want to enjoy uh, this and send it to your friends, I actually put it online for you, theannoyingsite.com. And uh, one last thing before I go, I'm launching a Patreon for the first time uh, so, so, um, at .js today. So if you guys are um, uh, interested, just want to mention it. I believe open source authors deserve to be paid for their work. And I'm hoping that uh, more people are going to be able to find some funding and be able to quit their jobs and work on open source full time. So um, it's been encouraging, actually, to see others in the community uh, start to do this. Um, like Evan Yu of Vue.js is the most successful, for example. Um, and I've been working full-time on open source for the past three years. Um, and I was just hoping to uh, do this Patreon maybe as a way to continue being able to do it and working on WebTorn and StandardJS and more craziness like this talk, for instance. So I'm offering cool rewards like these uh, stickers to anyone who, who pledges. And I've also created special edition stickers for Standard and uh, WebTorrent, which are only available to uh, Patreon supporters. So I hope you'll consider uh, supporting me. Thanks. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah